Praise God, it is so awesome to be here again tonight. God is so good, I just, I cannot, I just cannot share enough to you all about how much I love the Lord, how much I love you all, how much I love my pastor. Uh, I just, uh, it's just an awesome time, I just want to say that. But before we get started, I just want to go to the Lord in prayer and thank Him. Heavenly Father, I do, I thank you so much for the love you've got for us. I thank you for the love that that uh, you've got for everyone out there, Lord. You died for every person, yes, Lord. Lord, not just for us that we think we're, we're good or whatever. You died for all of us sinners. Yes, and I say us, Lord, because yes. I was a sinner. And, Lord, I try to do my best each and every day, but I still mess up. But, God, I just pray right now that every word that comes out of my mouth is from you. I pray every heart, every mind, every ear is open to hear your word, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, this is all about you and, and not about nothing else. God, I just love you, I thank you, and I praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Praise God. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I struggled about what to bring today. Uh, I struggled with different things. And, and I've had some things going on this week that just kind of made me crunchy. I even confessed to Pastor a while ago uh, about things that made me crunchy. And God says, you need to, you need to let that go and amen. bring the word uh, I also even told my wife, I told Pastor this too, I usually have something for you to look at on the screen. God says not today. Amen. Uh, not tonight. You, I, just, I want you to just come from your heart, bring scripture, okay. and preach it the way I want it preached today. Okay. So just be with me, pray for me, uh, as I bring God's word the way God wanted it to be brought. I'm just being obedient. But, you know, in the past I've been talking about the heart. Uh, I preached on, on uh, a new heart change. Uh, I preached on staying focused. Uh, and uh, God didn't really even give me a title. I, I think that's kind of uh, uh, funny because Pastor was talking about uh, when he brings his word or sometimes he didn't get a title to it. He was already through it all. So uh, <laughs> when he said that, it's brought me. So I, I really don't have a title. And what I want you to do, I want you to title it yourself. How God shows you as we go through this scripture. I want you to title it. God will show you what the title is and what it means to you. But we're going to be reading out of, uh, starting out of uh, different scriptures. We're going to start out first with Matthew uh, chapter 15, verse 8. And it says, these people, these people, and these people are us, honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Think about that just a minute. We can talk about Jesus all we want. We can go uh, sit in a restaurant and before we eat, we can pray to Jesus. We can let people see us uh, talk about Jesus. We can go anywhere we want and we can tell people about Jesus. We can do this. But if we don't truly have a relationship with him in our heart, then these words that we're speaking is nothing. It don't mean nothing, Pastor. Amen. It's nothing. You've got to have that relationship. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. You can't just speak it. I, you know, I can get up here and preach all day long to you all and tell you what the Scripture says and, 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 and know the Scripture. But yet, if I don't have Jesus in my heart, I'm nothing. I am literally nothing. You know, there was one time I went to this man's house. And the first time I've ever been in his house before. And he's passed on right now. Going to hope, pray, going to be with the Lord. Uh, but I went to his house and when we was walking through his house he was showing me all of his antiques and everything he had and he had a lot of stuff, he really did and he got to this place where he had this big stand there and he had this great big holy bible one of them big bibles and he looked at that he says, I've read that through dozens and dozens of times from front to back from front to back and I was sitting there thinking Holy Spirit was t touching me right then that's fine to read the Bible, but what are you living the word? Amen. Are you is, is that word inside your heart? Amen. And and then I would see I would see his fruit. And his fruit didn't even show that he was a Christian. Now I'm not judging him. I'm just saying you can read the Bible all you want, ten thousand times, I don't oh, care. Wow. But if you don't read that word and let that word come into your heart and live in your heart, Amen. let me tell you, it don't mean nothing. It's just another book. This Bible that God gave you is, is to read and study and then live it. you got to live the Word. You just don't read the Word. you got to live the Word. And you got to have that heart in you. I'm telling you, it's got to be there. 
You got to have Jesus completely. He won't want just part of you. He wants all of you. In Jeremiah 29, 13, if you don't have your Bibles, put me on stop and go get them. All you, that's what the good thing about this is. You can stop me right there and go do what you need to do. But go get your word because we're not having scripture like I told you. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All your heart. See, a lot of times us as Christians, and I'm talking to Christian people right now, there's a lot of times us as Christians wants to come to church on Sunday morning and we want to get excited. We want to come down here and, and pray and ask God to forgive us and that's all great. But the minute we walk out there in this world, we forget about a lot of things that we promised God. We did. We forget about a lot of things. Our heart then is just a half heart. We, we, we want it on Sunday, but Monday through the rest of the week, we want to live in the world. God says, that's not going to work. He's, it's not going to work. We've got to have, we've got to have all of Jesus. Yes, amen. We've got to take him everywhere we go. And we've got to show that we love him and that we, we honor him. And we're going to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And a lot of times as Christian people, it's so easy to get crunchy. I love, I've never heard that word crunchy until I met Pastor. I, I'm being honest. I never really focused on the word crunchy. But then it got to touch in my heart and my mind that us Christians are crunchy sometimes because we don't allow Jesus, all of him, in us. We just want, we just, there's a lot of us that just wants Jesus when things go wrong. When there's something bad and something, something that, that that's, uh, we can't fix, then we're ready to come back and go to the altar and say, Jesus, we need help now. And listen, again, that's wonderful to do. Cry out to God. But why, why put yourself in a predicament that you can always have Jesus in your heart Amen. and he will take care of the situation the minute that situation happens? You don't have to wait. You don't have to come down here to the altar every Sunday and get on, on your knees and say, here I am again, Lord. Here I am again. You can control all that because you can live the life that God's called you to live. And that's all your heart. Not just part of your heart. In Jeremiah 24, 7, it says, I will give them a heart to know me. You know when he gave you the heart to know him? It's when he sent his son. And he died on that old cross. And he took all that beating from you. He was spit upon. And everything he died, he went to hell just for you and for me. And he says, I'll give you my heart. i give you my son. And we put it to shame sometimes. We put him to shame sometimes because the way we live as Christian people, you know, we think, I really believe in, a, in my mind and my heart, sometimes I really believe that we can hide from God. Yes. Come on, and there's no way you no can way. hide from God. Amen. But us Christians, sometimes we think, well, nobody's going to know what I'm doing right now. Nobody's going to find out. And then all of a sudden, you start feeling like, I've lost it all. What's happened? Well, I'll tell you what's happened. You've allowed Satan in your heart instead of Jesus having the whole heart. He gave you that new heart the minute you said yes to him. He gave it all. There's, Jesus can't die on that cross no more. He gave it all on the cross. He took it all, every bit of it. And God says, now I give you a complete heart change, a complete new heart the minute you say yes to Jesus, the minute you Ask him in your heart. I give you a new heart. He wants you to take it all. And, and it says, for I am the Lord, and they will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with their whole heart, Pastor. Not just a part heart. They, God says, when you finally come to your senses, when you finally start knowing that that you cannot do nothing without me. You'll never be satisfied unless you've got Jesus. Yes. This world cannot satisfy you. This money cannot satisfy you. I don't care what it is. Your own spouse cannot satisfy you. Amen. Your mom and dad can't satisfy you. Amen. Only Jesus can give you the full satisfaction. And he says, then you will honor me as God, as the only one. You will come back to me with a new clean heart and you will accept all of me. And that's what God wants is what he's saying in Jeremiah. Then we go to Psalms. I love the book of Psalms. You know, uh, the book of Psalms is, is just, uh, to me, is, is, is heartfelt. Amen. It is. Yes. It, it, it's heartfelt. Come on, man. It's heartfelt. You know, David, David uh, uh, from, from, from a young age, God, 
used David and he, he, he anointed David at a young age. And, and, and David, of course, he did mess up. And, and David, he, he started, when he wrote the part of two-thirds of Psalms, his heart was burdened, but yet his heart was all for God. You know, he was, he was the one that was after God's own heart. Why can't we be after God's own heart? That's what God wants from us. He wants us just like David. He wants us to get all of God's heart. God wants to give it all to you. But in Psalms 91, 14 through 15, it says, Because he has focused his love on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in his distress. I will deliver him and I will honor him. There's a lot of times, there's a lot of times, Pastor, I'm serious. There's a lot of times we'll pray and we'll pray and we'll pray and we don't have peace about when we pray. We don't understand why God's not hearing us. How many times have you examined yourself and see if you're right before you pray? Oh, I'm serious. How many times before we pray, let's go to God and say, God, before I ask for anything, before I, I even pray for somebody that needs prayer, I want you to show me, do I need to change? Is my heart right? Is there something there that's not right with me? Do I need to do better? Do I need to get on my knees and cry out to you? Do I need to have a, a better relationship with you than I really don't have that I thought I had? Examine yourself. That's what God tells you to do. And then the minute you do, you will start seeing the things that, that David was saying in Psalms. That, you know, God, was, he wants to answer your prayers. He wants to give you the best. He wants to give you good health. He wants to give you good finances. He wants to give you a good marriage. He wants to give you everything that your heart desires. But listen, you've got to examine yourself and see if you're right for it. God just can't pour out blessings upon you and you're living in a, a, a wrong place or doing the wrong things. You know, the, the, the best thing you can do is be truthful. The best thing you can do is go to God and say, God, I've messed up. And I, I want to change. I, I want that new heart. I want to know that when I'm praying, that my prayers is going to be answered. God wants to answer every prayer you got. Sometimes the, God, the prayers that God answers is in his way might not suit you, but you take it. And you say, that's fine, God. I, I know it's from you. I know it's from you. And that's what we need to do. We need to trust God more, even though it's not getting what we want. God knows best for us, you all. He knows best for us. Going in, uh, into Philipp uh, Philippians now, it says, Philippians 3, 13 through 14, it says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing. On one thing, Pastor. If we'll just focus on one thing, forgetting the past yes. and looking forward to what lies ahead. Hallelujah. I mean, my goodness, listen to me, church. Listen to me right now. There's so many, I, I love Everything I'm, that God's laid on my heart, it just brings me back to Sunday morning when the pastor was preaching. How many of us can see somebody that's hurt us and we say we forgave them? And we, and we, minute that we look at them, that thought comes back, that anger comes back, that unforgiveness comes back, and yet we thought we forgave them? Listen, what happens in the past is over. You cannot change it. Which, you know, I, this is what God laid on my heart. The next time you see somebody, and I'm, I'm going to challenge you, even myself. The next time you see somebody that hurts you, and you see them over there, go over there and ask them, could you go out and take them out to dinner? Oh, my goodness. And I know some, I just felt it right there, Pastor. There's someone there said, right now saying, are you crazy? I mean, I felt that, just like Holy Spirit just showed me. Are you crazy? You think I'm going to go over there what this person done to me? You know, I don't know, maybe, maybe this person done real bad to you. Maybe this person has, has, has uh, cheated on your spouse. Maybe this person has, has stolen money from you. Maybe this person has lied about you. Maybe this person has uh, done you the worst that, that you could even think about. Well, let me tell you what. We've all messed up. We've all done wrong. But you know what God laid on my heart? The minute I asked Jesus in my life, and the minute I asked him to forgive me, he says, I will not remember from far as the east is to yeah. the west none yeah. of your sins. All your sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus, and no more will I remember. And he says, I want you to do the same thing. Listen, what happened 10 minutes ago is done over. We're right now in this time period. We're right now in this season. We're right now here. Quit looking back at what somebody done to you. You look at them and that's God's child. 
He loves them. He expects you to do the same thing Jesus did is to go over and put your arms around them and say, hey, let's go out and eat. What about a cup of coffee? What about just, let's just talk. Let's just, yeah. I mean, listen, you might win that person to Jesus. The person that, that caused you anger, that caused that done you wrong, you might win that person to Jesus. Quit looking in the past. The past is dead and gone. Look at the future. Look at Jesus. Look forward. Keep your eyes focused where they need to be. And it's on Christ. Get that heart changed. Please, get that heart changed. In 1 Peter 5 eight says, stay alert. Stay alert. So you know what comes with that? That's that old Satan out there. The scripture says, stay alert. Watch out for, great, for your great enemy. The devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And I, and I like this scripture because we have to stay focused. We have to stay focused on Jesus. But let me, let me say this. God really touched me on this even this morning when I got up and was going through this again for I, I brought it tonight. Satan has no control over me, Pastor. He has no control over me. I, 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 I'm saying this. Listen, if John personally tries to fight or stay with the devil, I'm whipped. I, he'll destroy me. But I have Jesus Christ in my heart. I've got the same authority, the same power that Jesus had because he gave it to me when the Holy Spirit came to live inside of me. So right now, I've got the devil by the throat. And when, it, when he even speaks to me, I look like that and, and he runs. He, he leaves his place. Let me tell you, he has no authority over you whatsoever. None, not one thing can he do to you. The only thing he can do to you is what you allow him. Quit allowing him. Quit even having that thought. This, this rebuke, you know, the Bible says he'd come like a roaring lion, but when I kick him, he's like a little kitty cat running away. He's done. He's done. There's no more. And listen to me. You've got to stand up and be strong. Quit having fear upon you. Quit being afraid of, of, of someone or something yes. that, that, that God's done kicked out and Jesus done died on the cross and put him to hell. Listen, he's, he can't do nothing to what you allow him to do. Quit allowing him. Quit allowing him, church. Quit allowing him, Christian people. You've got that authority. And, and, and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. I love the book of Jonah. Jonah 2, 7 says, When I had lost all hope. How many of us here has lost a lot of hope sometimes? How many, there's, when this virus started going around, people started getting fear. I preached this before. Start getting fear in your heart. You get afraid. And you lost hope. I can't go vacation no more. I can't go to... Uh, to work now. I can't go do this. I can't do that. I can't do that. Stop. Amen. Stop. Where's your hope in Christ? Hallelujah. Where's your hope? Listen to what it says and what Jonah says. When I had lost all hope, I turned my thoughts yes. once more to the Lord. Hallelujah. My goodness. I turned my thoughts to the Lord. Listen to me. When something goes bad, when something is bothering you, when you've got fear, Look to the Lord. Keep eyes focused on Him. Do what He's called you to do and just praise Him. Yes. You know, I always thought about my arms out like that. I go walking a lot of times. I see my shadow up through there. And I, I hold my arms out. We're called Open Arms Church. We're called that for a reason because God gave, gave that name to us. But we've got a coffee cup with our arms out. When you look back at that shadow behind you, it's a cross. It's a cross. Let me tell you, when, when things start getting bad, hold your arms out and think about Jesus Christ. He, he died on that cross. He says, you've got hope. All you've got to do is just ask me. You've got the hope. Quit, quit acting like a, a little child that's hurt or scared. Satan cannot do nothing to you. You've got, you've got eternity with me, which is Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Act like it, Christian Amen. people. Act like it. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Grab a hold of that hope. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I, I love this scripture, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. There's nothing we can do. There, there's nothing that we can't do. There's nothing that we can't do through Christ. You can't do nothing on your own. But through Christ, I can do all things. I, can, I control Satan. I, I, can, I can control my health. I've got good health. I've got finances. I, because of what I'm looking at, because of Jesus Christ. You, you have all things. And as I close out tonight, 
In Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. I love this scripture here. It says, therefore. What's therefore? Therefore reason. Praise God, Pastor. Therefore reason. Since we have so great a cloud of witnesses around us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangled us, and let us run the endurance, the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Woo! Praise God. Listen to me. We are running a race right now. And that race is getting ready to end because the uh, Jesus is getting ready to come back. The, the trumpet is getting ready to blow. And we're in this race. We've done started running. We've been running for a long time. Let's, let's have the endurance to win this race. Let's get ready. Let's let people that don't know Jesus see how we truly are. Let's see, let people get saved by just by seeing Jesus in us. We don't even have to speak a word. They can just look upon us and they want that. Amen. Let's run that race to the very end. And listen to me, we're about to cross that finish line right now. That line is we're about to go through that finish line. Let's get prepared to take some other souls there with us that don't know Jesus. That's what our go is. That's what we're expected to do is have that runner right behind us or right beside us when we're called out of here. In the name of Jesus, let's get ready. Let's get ready. We're getting ready to finish this race up. Let's have a heart transplant, you all. Like I told you at the very beginning, you put the name of the, this message however you want to put it. I know what God showed me, and I'm not even going to say it. You say it. You say it. And then be obedient to do what God's called you to do. I love you. I love you, church. And as Pastor said earlier Sunday, we're going to preach this message so hard. We're not doing it just to say, look at John or look at Joy. We're not. We're doing it so we're telling, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me really close right now. Examine yourself. Examine yourself right this minute as we close out. Examine yourself. Are you ready to cross that finishing line? Are you ready to stand before Jesus Christ by yourself? And he looks down at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Will he say that to you? Well, right now, if you don't think he will, you've got, the, you've got the time right this minute to make that change. Ask him in your heart. If, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior already and, and you felt like your heart's just halfway for Jesus, repent from it. Get on your knees and just cry out to him. Give it all to him tonight. This might be the last night. That trumpet could sound before I even get through speaking. Or the minute I get through speaking, it might be over. Are you ready? Is your heart right? Is Jesus number one in your life? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a new season. I thank you, Lord, that me and pastors running this race as hard as we can. It's not about me or pastor, but it's about what we're called to do by you, Lord. And we're going to stand holding each other accountable that we're going to preach your word until you come back the way you want it preached. Whatever you change our hearts to do, Lord, we're going to do it. And God, we're going to be obedient. And I pray, dear Lord, that the, the ones out there that hears everything that we preach takes it to their heart and live by it. It's not about joy or John. We, we're, neither one of us, we both say this, we're not smart enough to even be up here. Amen. But only through the Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray that, that they see this and they hear this only through the Holy Spirit. God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, and again, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.